Now that we've used the model coordination tool in BIM 360 to identify lots and lots of clashes between the various models that we're integrating, the important thing to turn our attention to is which of those various clashes we actually care about. Particularly as we're in the early stages of creating our models with a very low level of detail, we're just testing different design concepts and we're not really ready to fully resolve all the details down to inch by inch accuracy. So when we get all these different clashes, and there will be lots of them, we have to decide is that clash a true problem that really needs to be resolved, or is this just a modeling inaccuracy, some sort of a simplification as we're developing our early stage models that we don't care about, because they'll be fixed later after we identify which concept we're going to carry forward and we really start working out all the details. So we need to go through that list of clashes and really decide which ones we do care about and try to kick out the rest so we can reduce the list and simplify it. Now if your file naming is consistent, okay, you don't change the file names and you upload new versions of the model, the good news is that any prior decisions about whether a clash is important or not will carry forward. So that's one of the big advantages of keeping those file names consistent and letting the versioning happen in BIM 360. So let's show you how you do that. How do we classify things as either an issue that we care about or that we don't care about? So we're going to do that by starting with the model coordination tool. So we open up the model coordination tool. We're looking at our coordination space. And again, since we've probably already saved a view, we can go to the saved views and open that instead. Now we can look at the clashes that have been detected by clicking the clashes button here. Okay, and again, you'll see here we have a huge list of clashes, 1,070 clashes kind of hanging around in here. Okay, so what do we do about this? Okay, we can group things together to help us organize things. So right now, for example, they're all grouped by object, individual elements. We could also change it to be grouped by type name. Often that's a more useful way of doing things because you can find oh, categories of things. So all the different glazed panels show up together and the 79 clashes that are related to that or all the interior core walls and all the clashes that are related to that. Or here's all the different clashes that are related to things that clash with the floor. Okay, it's a very common thing. As we're doing our modeling, often we bring the uh, columns up, the intersect with the floor. We don't actually stop them underneath the floor, so that creates a certain type of clash, and we probably have a whole lot of those. Okay, so once we've gone ahead and kind of identified some different clashes here, let's go ahead and just kind of review what you can do. So for example, as I go through and, oh, let's go back to the elements. And let's take a look at that. Oh, basic wall, where did it go? Well, any of these will work. Okay, now as we're looking at this basic wall, it's a little hard to see what's going on because the model is very dense right now. Yeah, as we take a look at this, we can pivot around a little bit. Let's orbit. See if we can see it a little bit better. There we go. And you can see that we have, if we could even like spin this on down, have so basically a wide flange that's conflicting with the wall. We have the floor that's conflicting with the wall. Oh, we have several different pieces that are sort of conflicting with it right now. So this is one of those ones where we have to stop and decide, is this really something that we care about? Okay, now as you're going through and doing your modeling and you're replacing your walls, going up from level one to level two, very often you will just place them for level one to two and not really think about the fact that they're probably going to run into some structural elements. So is this a significant clash? Well, I'd probably put it in the category of not really a significant clash because what will happen is as we move on with our modeling to greater levels of detail, we'll bring that wall on down, kind of giving ourselves a more accurate model. But this is not really a design issue that needs to be resolved. You know, there's nothing that will really change about the design. We just need to make the model a little bit more accurate. It's not really a problem. It's just a modeling inaccuracy based on the fact that it's a pretty early stage development of the model. So if you don't want to be bothered with this one any longer, you don't want to have to consider that. Not a problem. Here's what we do. You click the Not an Issue button down here. Okay. 
it's basically going to take those 10 different clashes and we can say, you know, that's really just, uh, I'll live with it as a modeling inaccuracy. Okay, there's a number of other reasons in there. You can say that it actually is a valid interface. Things can overlap or it's a valid penetration. Um, columns going through floors probably fall into that category. Okay, or it's an item that can be flexed or moved. I'm just going to call it a modeling inaccuracy and say, okay. So when I put it in that category, let it spin around for just a second, it's going to move those 10 clashes out. So now you can see I'm back to 10, 000, or 1,060 clashes, a little bit better. Okay, we're going to make some progress here. There's kind of quicker ways to do that. But the idea is that you want to classify things as either important, as, in not an, as an issue, or not important, not an issue, so that you can reduce that down. And the good thing is, if you classify them and do the work once, it's going to carry forward to future versions of the model if you set up the versioning right. Okay. Next up, let's go ahead and kind of take a look at a problem that maybe is a little more important. Oh, I am going to spin around and kind of show you one that I know is a bit of an issue. You can sort of see it right about here. You might notice that I have these diagonal braces that are coming on down for some shear support, and they're going right through some curtain walls and some glazing and some mullions. And, you know, in the grand scheme of things, that's really not a good thing. That is something that actually does need to be fixed. I'm going to need to either adjust the structure or adjust the glazing out so that we don't have that sort of a conflict. So let's take a look at that and see how you can sort of work with it. If I come on over and I choose, for example, one of those braces that looks a little suspect right now, you can see it'll highlight over here in the list the different problems that it's related to. So you see that that brace is intersecting with a basic wall. Okay, we have a basic wall over here that's involved in it with a hollow structural section. So we got some different issues there. You know, there's some problems there. And we can go through and say that, you know, this is an issue. We want to track it. And we can come over here and just click issue and make it an issue, which will make it a database issue we can track. Now, before we do that, I want to go ahead and kind of think about whether we can do it. Well, no, let's do it that way first. And then I'll show you the other way to do it. Okay, so I'm going to go through and create an issue. Now, when you say that you want to create an issue, you start by just basically putting a pin on the issue. So I'll put a pin right on that brace, so we'll find it later. And I'm going to call that a coordination clash. That's super. And I'll say that diagonal brace conflicts with the curtain wall. Okay, currently that's assigned to me, which is probably where it'll stay. I can give it a due date, or I can assign it to someone else if I was lucky enough to have someone working with me to, uh, you know, assign that to who might be taking care of. And you, you can just sort of think about who needs to resolve this. Is this something for the structural engineer to resolve or for the architect to resolve? I'm going to say create it, and that'll put it in the list of issues. So that's going to be considered to be important. It looks like, it's interesting, it's put a lot of information in here too much information in there because it says there's a thousand character limit. That's actually sort of funny that it's done that. I'm just going to go through and take that out. I should put in something smaller. The auto text was just a little bit too ambitious. We'll create that. Great. So this is an issue, it's moved to the Assign tab. It's no longer over here in kind of the Unresolved tab. It's kind of now in our special category of Assign things. Super. Now, you might suspect that if that one was an issue, okay, there might be some other cases where that is still, still an issue. So let's go ahead and see if we can figure that out. You'll see that over here in the model, that one's actually ghosted out. We still have all these others. They're hanging around, but you know, finding those all individually might be very painful. So let's go ahead and take a look at it in a slightly different way. We can say that really the problems with all those hollow steel tubes. Okay, and if that's the case, let's go ahead and try shifting it so that the structural model is the primary kind of uh, model that we're working with, and we're going to conflict. We're going to choose clashes in the architectural model against that. And to help me find all those hollow steel tubes, I'm going to go by type name, because then I can see them all right here. 
Ah, so now I've selected a bunch of them. There's 56 different clashes that are all related to hollow steel tubes that are somehow clashing with curtain walls and walls. So a quickie way of going through and creating an issue with all those is to select them here. I'm going to create an issue here. Okay, that's open. It's clashing with all those other objects. That one was a little less ambitious. Let's see what else is going on in here. The title's there. Oh, we have to go through and put our little pin in there. I often overlook that. I'm going to put it on that one. This will remember it. Okay, I'm going to create that. So now we're down to 996. Now notice all these issues have been moved to something called the Assigned tab. I can click on this, and you'll see that I have a series of different issues here. Okay, so these are assigned clashes. Okay, so if I go back and take a look at one of those. It'll bring it up and just show me exactly where that issue is. So they've moved over from just kind of clashes to issues that I can go back and kind of take a look at. So that's kind of a useful way of just keeping track of problems you have in the model that need to be resolved and assigned to people. Super. Okay, so the big issue to think about here is really as you go through the different clashes, how can we go through that list and just uh, sort it out so that we have a true list of clashes we do care about and we sort off the things that we don't care about and assign those issues so we'll keep on tracking them. Again, that'll follow us forward as we move through uh, the various versions. We'll also learn about how when you go to Revit, you can display all those issues and all the little push pins so you can uh, basically resolve them right in Revit so that when the next version of your model is uploaded, okay, you can see that that and confirm that that clash has been taken care of and you can move it over to the closed category. Okay, so that's coming up next.